Hi, welcome to my channel. Hey, Uncle Kenny! Football! Hey, yeah! My name is Cedric. I'm an actor, filmmaker, screenwriter, and YouTube reactor. I want to thank you all for your patience as I finally am getting to Dimash's When I've Got You. I've had a very busy few weeks. I was waiting for this to drop because I know the teaser came out, I think, in December. I was right in between. I did the musical Something Rotten. I played Shakespeare, and then I flew to North Carolina to do the play Butterflies Are Free. And it came out like right in between those two projects. And so it's just, it's been very busy. I've got other things in development that I'm hoping I can talk to you about soon. But it's been very busy, so I appreciate your patience. I've been excited to get to this, but I knew it was a little bit longer. It's just over seven and a half minutes. So I wanted to be able to give it the time and attention it deserved. And now I've got a couple of um, really days at the most in between projects that, that are still busy, but I've got a bit of time. And so I thought, hey, let's hop back on YouTube and and get to this Dimash video, which I've heard is great. But I don't really know much about it. I think it has to do with vampires. I think. Maybe. So, Twilight. Which, I'm gonna be honest with you. I read all the books, saw all of them in theaters. Team Edward. Before we jump in, I want to say thank you, of course, to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much. Some of you are a little bit more aware of some of the stuff I've got going on, and I appreciate your support with that. Obviously, it's an exciting time, a stressful time, and, and uh, I appreciate your support of me as I continue to um, do all the things that I'm doing. There's other stuff I haven't been able to announce yet either that I haven't even been able to put on Patreon. So I'm excited for everything going on and your support means a lot to me as, as I continue to do that. So thank you so much for just helping it be possible for me to do this. If you'll indulge me, I do want to plug the Corners Assistant. I know, I know, I talk about it a lot, but I'm really proud of this show. And we were just nominated for 11 Indie Series Awards. I was nominated for Best Leading Actor in a Comedy. We were nominated for Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy, Best Leading Actress in a Comedy, Best Cinematography, Best Production Design. There was all kinds of awards. So um, I'm really excited to go to that. Thank you to all of you who have watched and supported the show. We are planning to make season two, but we need people to watch the show and support it to be able to make that happen. So please check it out. I'm super proud of this thing. This is as indie as it gets, and it's a little show that could. The Astra nominations were a great, great opportunity for us, and this is another one. So we really appreciate any of you who can go and watch it and support the show. There's a link for it in the description of this video, as well as in the pinned comment. Thank you to all of you who have watched and enjoyed the show. I'm so proud of it. Okay, let's dive in. I don't know what we're about to explore, but I know we're going to explore it together. So, buckle up, because this is Dimash Kudabergen, When I've Got You. Yeah, so just right off the bat, we want to, if it, if it is going with this idea of vampires, notice how much we're getting these red accents in the frame. We see small, uh, kind of hovering in the black behind her, but that's red. We've got what looks like probably a red fill just in front of the car. You can see it spilling a little bit over to the right side. There was some of that casting onto her. So we're getting these red accents throughout the frame with the black and white. The white does have a little bit of green in the shadows, which creates this red and green, which contrast well. They bounce off each other. They create a kind of aggression in the frame as well. And there's some blue tones. So there's cooler tones that pop against the warmth of the red. Just wanted to point that out right off the bat. Good sound design to hear the rain before we see it. The umbrella is an interesting visual. Okay, I'm, I, I know, I just paused 20 seconds in, I'm sorry. Nice. So those lightning flashes were probably hidden on the other side of those trees on that tracking shot. Well, they're really treating this like a film, aren't they? 
Yeah, so there's a gorgeous composition to the shots here. Most of our sound design is happening in the storm and in the radio that we're hearing. So there's this sort of elegance that's going along with it and we're getting these high tracking shots pushing to the left, we're seeing the lightning flash, and then we're getting overhead crane shots. We're, oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Ugh. It's too much rain in this video for me. But we're getting these kind of shots that almost make it feel like she's being watched in a sense. We get this nice lower angle shot on the guy that's waiting for her, which kind of creates these lines and shadows in his face. So there's this kind of haunting sense. It feels like a horror movie set up. This wide tracking shot where she's driving almost feels like someone's watching her from up there. Uh, good production design too. This is a nice classic car that we're seeing. Uh, hiding a lot in the shadows, creating contrast, making us look in the shadows the whole time. So there's some really nice filmmaking technique that's existing throughout here. Nice lens flare on that. Nice, the blood on the title, nice. Or that red in frame. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah, so they're doing a lot of wide angle lenses that show you the whole room. And that's interesting, especially on the close up as she's walking in, because often that lower angle is gonna give power, but she's actually being dwarfed by the room the whole time. She doesn't seem necessarily afraid, but there is this kind of uh, trepidation that she has. It's very, very interesting, punching into the close-up of the record. There's, there's some really nice uh, setting the stage, showing us the space, still seeing that black, white, red. That's our primary colors that we're getting to see here. There's a nice white transition as she's coming in. We see the title go away and then it's in the shadow of her back. So there's some really smooth stuff. It's happening to kind of pull you in, get that, say, that sense of, of pace and tempo with it. Dimash being up on the balcony, lightning flash and he's gone. Obviously, you know, you can stitch those shots together, but it's, it's a nice technique because in our story consuming mind, that's not possible. So it does show us that he's the other and we've had this foreboding sense. So this is the confirmation of that. Um, so the, the questions remain, why is she here? Did he summon her? Does she know what she's walking into? Are they in love? Uh, a lot of questions. So um, just because it's structured as a horror film doesn't mean that it's horrifying. Hey, so I just did a bit of a deep dive into the song that's playing over the radio here. It is called Dour des Fleurs. And you know, the songs really, I looked up the lyrics and, and read them and it's, it's an invitation to go into this kind of mystical place. And I think that that kind of changes my interpretation that I'm gonna give throughout this video. So I might leave notes on this throughout, but I, I think I talked about Tomash kind of feeling alone, etc. but yeah, I don't know. I'm actually not sure how that's going to change it, but I might leave notes as I go. It is a note of how much of a student of classical music he is that he would pick this recording, which I believe is from 1915. And I want to shout out the Bangkok voice coach. It's a YouTuber who also does analyses, I guess, but I've, I've never heard of him. But I was trying to figure out what the song was, and this came up as a Google search result, and, and uh, he was correct. So anyway, there's that. But I'm interested to see how that changes this, because I think I interpreted it and I think what I said makes sense. It's It felt malevolent to me, but I think there's other readings of it too. So I'm, I might explore that throughout. I guess we'll see. <laughs> okay. Nice. My way, to the river. Mm. lost for the Looking for freedom. There's nothing but chance around me. Mm, but mm, I mm, want mm. chance. Really, air chance. Adding that vibrato on the back. But chance around me. And there's a nice slide on the opening line, too. I don't remember what the line was, but it was sliding up into the note. 
not what we're expecting. And there's an interesting contrast here with, we're seeing some of the lamps that work. We know they've got electricity, but there's also candles. We've got this gothic mansion with a guy that we know can sing opera and he's sitting at this piano but he's singing with this more modern pop tone to it and, and then you know an 80s style um orchestration thus far within the actual song itself there's a drum machine that kind of feeling which matches the title sequence that we saw very michael jackson thriller that kind of feel to it so we're seeing this juxtaposition of of uh times of eras that exist within it that i really like Great voice so far, pull back, you know he's gonna go somewhere with it, but it 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 um it feels uh quiet but very intense and I'm really liking that. Great voice as as we know it's Dimash. Be broken Nice Cause I'm gonna fight this oh, cool. fight every moment Not gonna Much more forward this time. You are my gateway to heaven. A lot more attacked on it. Attacked. Much more forward approach now that we're in the chorus. Much more intense. I didn't think he'd go there that quick, but it makes sense. He's given the power. He puts out the candle, draws her forward. We can see he's got powers. There's no hiding this feeling of powers that he's got. This cool motion where we see the camera moving, he's appearing, disappearing. This is a robotic camera movement to make sure that it's the exact same frame every time. So they've got the camera essentially on a robot arm and it's programmed to hit certain points. So then Dimash can hit his different marks and they can stitch together the takes seamlessly and he can appear and disappear throughout the camera move. The first two times they hit it with cuts and you think, oh, that's what they're doing. But then you see it integrated in the same shot where he appears in the frame as he disappears, you know, in, in the background of it. So really, really cool that they, they kind of go, oh, look, we're just cutting between it. Oh, no, we're not. Like, he's got magic, right? So if you're drawn into the visual storytelling, which, of course, I am, but I also do this, so I'm looking at how they're doing this, uh, it's a nice way to kind of wink at the audience, but then almost like, you know, yanking the um, the, the tablecloth out from a table and leaving the dishes there. I like that she seems like she half knew what she was expecting uh, walking in here. I like the idea of, of gateway to heaven as well with this, you know, if he is a vampire or whatever kind of magical being he is, if he's immortal, does that mean he's eternal? Does that mean he can die or get into heaven? Is that something he's concerned about? Like, um, or is this his heaven? You know, if he doesn't die, then yes, being with you would be it. Uh, interesting, interesting visuals, but the, uh, the vocals are great. Love this nice forward position, but still soaring attack on the chorus. Beautiful, beautiful voice as always. And the nice, uh, nice transition right here as he goes from that forward mix into his, into his head voice, into his falsetto, really beautiful open vibrato on it too, right here. Come back to life, my life could do. Yeah, so that's just, it's beautiful vocal technique. I just wanted to point that out. All right, on with the chorus. Nice runs too. So again, we're pulling in a lot of images from different cultures. Or, I mean, obviously hands extending beyond uh, a subject and a frame has, has been 
uh, done many, many times. But there's some interesting kind of sacred imagery from around the world being pulled in here. Uh, there's a similar image in a recent Aurora reaction that I did for Your Blood. Uh, there was kind of a, a, a same thing there. But there's this real sense of power. She looks definitely like she's being surprised now. I love this chorus. I love the um, kind of tripping, bubbling sense of the rhythm that he's got here. And, and this is a transition between these nice runs down into chest voice and then back up into this bum 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 ba, da, da, da. very high and bright and then coming down into this warmth and almost a growl to it and then getting into the second verse a definitive growl and a gorgeous gorgeous low harmony with it that you just hear is this resonance it's not even you know it's not a rumble that he's doing it's not like when you go subharmonics you bum i'm down here it's not that it's actual full voice that he's got down there which is just a reminder that while his voice in this range is amazing and it's really good it's a reminder of like this is a truly extraordinary vocalist because this is all him it's it's so good Nice snap on it. Easy these days. But when I come home to your sweet love, you're my size of heaven. I got my right or die in my arms all night. Listen to some of the operatic technique. Ride or die. All very open on ride or die. Ride or die, I've got my slice of heaven. All very open right here. Very ah. I've got my right or die in my arms all night. Which gives him vibrato, warmth, but also power. As we see all of them walking forward, we wonder, are they going to attack her? No, they're just sitting down with her. They're also doing a lot with the camera to imply that he's a monster, and that's employing the visual language to make us feel a certain way, to lead us down a certain path, and to put us in her perspective, right? So on this particular shot, they're using what's called a dolly zoom, also known as a Hitchcock zoom, and it's when you're either dollying in and zooming out, or you're dollying backwards and zooming in, and it compresses the background or pulls the background away. In this particular shot, it brings the background toward her, it brings his home toward her, it brings his life toward her at an uncomfortable speed. Notice how she doesn't really change size in the frame, but the background does get a lot closer to her, even though it's very quick. It's one of those subtle things that's meant to hit your subconscious more than your conscious, to put you in her mindset. And so there's these little things they're doing with the camera that make us feel a certain way that uh, speak to that kind of primal instinct. And that's what we're trying to do as storytellers is engage that. So it's a nice little moment. I didn't notice it until I was editing this, but I certainly felt what they were trying to make me feel with it. So I just wanted to point that out. So he's adding a bit more um, vocal control to it. It's not as as pop as it was at the beginning. Now it's more open, it's more operatic, and it feels, we, we get this sense that he's in control of everything more. There's a bit more of a, of um, a strength, this kind of, not even magic, but manipulation almost, where you just, as he's employing this power in his voice, we feel it in her. And, and there's something interesting to say too about acting where, when you're telling some kind of horror story or something with the monster, it's not how scary the monster is, it's how scared the people running from it are. And so at first it was like, oh, this is interesting. Why is she here? What's going on? And now as we're starting to see her really kind of go, oh, what's going on? We feel it. It's not that Dimash is being scary, it's that she is scared, right? So that's just an interesting thing for you to note. It's never how scary the thing is, it's how scared everyone is of it. I got my right or die in my the on die. Night. Not gonna lie, because sometimes I nice, love that. Yeah, 
Yeah, so he's hitting this, not gonna lie, da 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 da. Very musical theater approach on it, and then all of a sudden, pop into that falsetto, pop on a quick whistle tone, and then cut it off. Just a little taste of it. Again, that feeling of control, but it's so good. There's a real sense of, of magic to the voice, and there's, there's a battle between the fear and the allure of what we're seeing, of what we're hearing, that red still being in frame, we're hearing this kind of a, a sense of purity and, and, and weight to it that in his voice itself that have this black and white and then she's kind of in the middle, she's the red, she's the life, she's the blood, she's what he's looking for. He's lonely, he's living in this black and white life death world, she presents this coming together of those two for him and he's he's alone and so it's interesting to see how they're visually pulling all those things together it's a lot of center framing too which i find very interesting because we're not seeing a lot of playing on different thirds we're seeing them in the center in a lot of the frames and i i kind of really like it it's really working for me So it's interesting seeing the, you know, the, the light rectangle that we have here because uh, we're starting to see blue being pulled into frame, which we saw in the opening. I talked about the blue and the green that we're getting little hints of. They've been pulling a little bit more of that blue into the shadows. So now we're starting to see it more explicitly there. And notice too the purple lamp, which is the combination of the red and the blue. Now we're starting to see her almost accept, you know, I don't know if the, the, the dowsing was this kind of where she was under the water that's kind of a sense of rebirth where now she is becoming this eternal being alongside him. She's choosing to be with him. She's laying in the bed, but also interesting that we're seeing rectangles. And then behind him, we're getting what looks like a pentagon, but also in, in the close-ups feels like a triangle. So we're kind of getting these basic shapes that really draw your eye, right? That's always the goal. When I talk about the thirds, we did see more of the thirds. I said there's a lot of center framing and there is, there's more than necessarily what we'd see in a lot of video projects. But we're seeing um, things playing on thirds, but there's always a shape. I was talking about wanting to draw triangles and we're seeing that. Look at where I paused. We're seeing the two uh, candles on the floor and then drawing up into her, like being able to look at her eyes. And then we're also seeing, you know, spot of light, spot of light, her right in the middle of it. So we're seeing all kinds of triangles in the frame, but we're also playing with other shapes that just give this, this world a sense of order. If you think about the checkerboard, the checkerboard floor that we had. There's a system to the visuals of, of what we're seeing. Nice wide angle lens there. Good guitar solo. Mm. control 
throughout this chorus, I, I really, I don't even know when he's taking a breath, and it's something I didn't even think about till just now, because one, I think that the filmmaking of this is really well done. I mean, there's, there's playing with the reds, with the shadows, there's a lot of shadow in frame. They're not afraid to leave darkness in frame, and I love that. I love that it's the bursts of light rather than the bursts of darkness. Um, and I think that's interesting with the world that they're trying. He's inviting her into the darkness and inviting us into the darkness. But his sound in the chorus is very bright, even though the orchestration is dark. So we're even seeing that white and black battle there, right? This this um, con this contrast between the heaviness and the lightness where, yes, it's a full voice on the chorus, but it's all high and bright and forward versus the right in the orchestration it's a lot of heavy guitar it's heavy percussion so there's something that's that's kind of in between those two and the runs down often you'll hear a vocal run go up but his is descending there's this feeling of bringing her down with him that yes maybe this is is wrong but i can't help what i am now right and so will you come with me i'm alone in this in this world so will you join me in it, in this underworld, in this darkness? And that the descending runs down into that rather than running up into some high notes, running down into a more full low voice is an interesting adjustment and underscores the intention of what the lyrics are, of what the world is. You know, I always say cohesion. That's like, you could put that on a t-shirt for my channel, but there is a cohesion between what we're seeing, what we're hearing, how it's orchestrated and, and what he's doing vocally to pull all of that together. Also, her performance is really good. There's a sense of like, oh, if I'm gonna do this, then I am going to kind of be the temptress. I'm going to, there's a, there's a seduction to it, but even when she tries to do that, all of a sudden he's behind her. So there's still this feeling of, even though he's been vulnerable, there's control. I almost said something about kind of a Beauty and the Beast type of feel to this, but I don't quite see that seeding of control that we get quite yet. So, and I kind of like that. It's, you know, she's accepting, she's both making a choice and also accepting that the choice is made, I guess, if that makes sense. And, uh, and I like that. It's compelling storytelling. Oh, nice rack focus. You never know what he's gonna do, do you? The answer to that is no. No, you don't. I fully and completely admitted after I finished this video while recording that I was not able to read the newspaper title. I didn't quite see what the headline was, so I'm sure I looked at that while I was doing the reaction. There's a bit of a glare coming from my window, so I couldn't quite make it out, but I tried. And then she wakes up in the car. Was it still just a dream? Did he put her to sleep and back in the car? And now I get it. She's a reporter going there to interview him but she's fallen asleep and the whole thing is a dream. There's kind of this sense of allure of, oh, this man of mystery, what is he? And our dreams kind of run away with it. So I understand it better now. The dream kind of scares her, wakes her up. And Dimash being, as far as I know, a fairly private person, there is that kind of uh, feeling to it as well. I like the uh, the element there, but I'm just going to freely admit that I was not able to read the newspaper headline, so I kind of missed all of that. I thought maybe he hypnotized her and put her back in the car or something to that effect. So I get it a little bit more now. Completely different than anything I've ever seen him do. It did feel like a movie. I mean, it felt like a, a short film. It felt like they were really prioritizing a story being told that works with the song that uh, is, is, is visually compelling along with taking what we're hearing and making something interesting out of it. And not just that, but taking a story we're familiar with, with the idea of a vampire getting a familiar or, um, you know, monster plus human equals love. Still putting twists on it, you know, scaring me. Like when she turns around in the mirror and sees him and he jumps, ah! <laughs> I, 
this was great. This was super great, and it's as always with him. Not a, I, again. I don't expect anything necessarily from him. I've learned far too many times that that's a useless, useless strategy. It was always interesting. It's always compelling. It's always artistic, and I love that. It doesn't feel like there's an easy way out with his videos. And, and there is no easy way out with making a 7 minute and 46 second music video. You're obviously going for something with that. But he didn't just go for it, he landed it. And I thought it was great. And I hope that I brought something to it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, I don't know, I hope, you, I hope you enjoyed what I had to say. But if not, thanks for watching anyway. Please, please, please drink lots of water, get lots of sleep, fix your postures, and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, but until then, be well.